Hi, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. Alonzo here with Matt and Christy. And uh, welcome to the room where it happens. We're talking about Hamilton. All of our rooms are the room where it happens. That's right. I'm not in a room. The room where it happens. You're in the backyard where it happens. Um, this is Hamilton. This is a, um, a filmed version of the stage production, the pop culture phenomenon. Um, this was filmed in June 2016, right after it had just dominated at the Tonys and right before several of the key cast members left. And it's really in that sweet spot where they're all just firing at all cylinders and they've done it for so long that they didn't even need to rehearse it all. If they knew what they were doing, it was shot over a couple of different performances, a Sunday matinee and a Tuesday night show. And um, they had nine cameras all over the place and a hundred microphones. And it is, they didn't, they didn't expand beyond the stage the, you know, you don't see backstage, you don't see them getting ready. This is Hamilton on film. And it's on Disney Plus. The whole story with this was that it was going to open theatrically in October of 2021. Yep. And then um, Bob Iger approached Lin Manuel Miranda and said, Should we put it on streaming? And at first he was reluctant, and then they decided to do it. There, there, there had been this filmed version that was, you know, sitting around for a few years. And he had seen it and he was happy with it, but they thought it belonged in a, in a theater. And I really, really hope that at some point when we all get back to theaters, that there will be an opportunity to see it on the big screen because it is absolutely gorgeous. Declan Quinn shot it. It is better than the best seat in the house, you know? And, and because they know where to put the cameras when, you get the opportunity to experience the enormity of you know, the big numbers, but also the intimacy of the real emotion, you know, in a way that I think even if you do have a, a great orchestra seat in a theater, you can't see that level of detail, that level of precision. Um, and also it allows you to, when, when King George is coming out. And I say, his, maybe you don't want to be that close. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see, right, when Jonathan Groff comes out to do da-da-da-da-da, his happy little <laughs> song, you see Spittle flying out of his mouth. And, uh, yeah, th this is pre-coronavirus, clearly. No, <laughs> no one's wearing a mask to cover Ooh. up their projectile bodily fluids. But it's amazing. You know, I, I had never seen the show. I was not resistant, but just not, like, pumped like I never even tried to get a ticket when it came through Southern California and something like that where it is such a behemoth and such a pop culture phenomenon I'm always a little bit skeptical like mm -hmm. really could it be that good and now that I've seen it I'm like oh I get it I get it now and I've had all these songs in my head and it's just you guys know what it is. It's, it's Hamilton. It's, you know, the hip hop musical that draws from everything from Shakespeare to Rodgers and Hammerstein to Notorious B.I.G. And yeah. it's thrilling. I, I loved it. I, I had also not seen it on stage. And, you know, part of it was just because it was so difficult and expensive to get a ticket. But you're right. Whenever anything is that much of a juggernaut, I, my, my hairs in the back of my head, neck are like, really are we are we sure this is a thing and uh, you know it 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 earns its uh it, it, all of its its pop culture uh clout um it, it's weird yeah on the one hand yes absolutely it would be great to see this in a theater and it, it is beautifully assembled and mounted i have to admit i was really glad to get to see it at home because it all goes so fast uh old man that i am i yeah. really appreciated having the subtitles on like it really allowed me to keep up with what was going on and what's being said and so i i, I for my first viewing I'm, I'm actually glad that i got to do it via streaming it's very smart of lin Manuel miranda to to go along with this especially because you know we were supposed to be getting the in the heights movie this summer um, uh, and then that uh, got pushed back the next year. So it's like this sort of is keeping him in the in the public, uh, you know, currency. And, you know, I think, yeah, uh, Hamilton continues to be a huge on Broadway and, and will continue to be when Broadway returns. But, uh, you know, I think for a lot of people who would never have the chance, would never, it was never right. going to come to their town. Now they get to see this extraordinary piece of theater. Um, 
you the know, whole family. I, you can, everyone gets to down and watch it at once yeah. and not spend like a thousand dollars on it. Exactly. Anything. And they bleep the fucks for you. So, you know, you've got that going. There's <laughs> one that's like ever, there's like a mother fuck. Like they yeah. like, like, <laughs> analyzingly tease they it out there. The consonants, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, look, one of my favorite musicals of all time is 1776, dork that I am. So mm-hmm. I love musicals about the American Revolution, you know. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. And, uh, and yeah, I, you know, as, when it ended, Dave goes, well, I, now I see what all the shouting was about. You yeah, know? Totally no, completely. I mean, how often does it happen where something like the hype is not even just beyond justified? Yes, like it, absolutely. To- it lives up and exceeds the hype. Sure. Totally. But Matt, of the three of us, had actually seen Hamilton. So tell yes, us about so I So I saw it... Um, in I think it was 2016 or 2017, right after Miranda had left and Javier Munoz had taken over, um, who I actually think was better. Uh, than Miranda, really? Than Miranda. Um, Blasphemy. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I want to hear why. So there's a, now granted, this is a few years ago. My memory of Munoz's performance as Hamilton was, a his Hamilton was more self-assured um, and did not doubt himself in a way that Miranda's shows doubt in this. Um, Wait, in a does couple Hamilton of places. have doubt? I mean, the whole point well, of Hamilton is that he's like, he's so brash and he's well, so ambitious. the second half, maybe. Well, so that's the thing is, is there's, and part of it is like having seen Miranda act in other things, like there's there's that like, it's not exactly, it's almost like humility or hesitancy that he'll do as an actor. Not that he's hesitant, like he's showing you that the character is a little unsure. He's um, performing hesitancy. He's performing as, as being, you know, as, as a man who's unsure. And Munoz never did that, right? Whereas Munoz Hamilton was, was driven in a way that Miranda's didn't seem to be. Um, so that's one of, that's, that's one of my issues, but don't get me wrong. This is great. And if you've not seen this, this is absolutely worth watching. Um, you know, when I had seen it, I had the luxury of, of having access to house seats. So oh. I'm like, when I see it, I'm like six rows back and kind of like halfway to stage right. So I'm pretty, you know, like when I saw it, I was in the room where it happened. <laughs> um, you know, we were just kind of, just, raised enough from the stage that my eyeline could see that, oh yeah, the floor does rotate, but mm-hmm. you're pretty much just right there. Um, and, you know, what are the differences? And, and, you know, again, like I'm speaking to people who maybe have seen the show, right? If you've seen the show, the difference uh, in watching this is that now you have a director, an editor telling you what to pay attention mm-hmm. to in this in a way that either the staging does during the show or doesn't. Um, and so it kind of forces, and not that that's necessarily bad, it's just, it's a different experience. And it reminded me like, oh, okay, theater is different, right? And, and filming a musical on stage is a lot different than staging a musical for film. It's a much, much different experience. Although I would argue the staging here is so very cinematic in, in multiple ways. Like the the eye of the hurricane is quiet part or the rewind, rewind part. Like they're doing this sort of like slow-mo no, thing. Absolutely. And, and, when, and they're using the rotating stage where one character is sort of moving in real time and everybody else is moving around them. It's like, like bullet time out of the Matrix or something. And I was like, oh, okay, that is, that's doing something on stage where you are borrowing from cinema language totally but doing it live and totally. I, I find that really fascinating i guess there's a couple you know there's just a like there's a handful of shots that like there's one shot where david Diggs, who's so so good in this as jefferson and um lafayette, lafayette. um i mean if you ask me like if i were to be an actor that's the part in this show like that's sure. the best part of this show uh you know, and, and look, like we get to see, I can't remember the actor's name, but the one who won the Tony for playing Barr, I mean Burr. Uh, oh, Leslie, Leslie, Leslie Odom Jr. Jr. Leslie Odom Jr. is so good in this. I mean, everybody's terrific. You know, I just have, like, my qualms are about the experience of seeing this, having seen it, you know, and I, and I guess my number, you know, if my number, if I had never seen this show, 
-hmm. I would go into this and probably be where you guys are, like way up as a mind. But having seen this on stage, I'm a little bit lower. And, and partly because there's some shots that I think you would only get in a film experience. Like there's a, sh like I would say, there's a shot between, you know, in the second act between, uh, like it's a tight two shot of uh, Madison and Jefferson kind of almost from backstage, right? And that's not something that as an audience member you would have ever gotten that close to. Or, you know, the the Busby Berkeley style shot where it's looking down and you see the perfect circle. And it's a little like, that's cheating, right? And so there's a couple, <laughs> and there and the thing is But like, that's really cool. Yeah, and because it, I mean, it, do you want to just plant one camera in one seat and just no, like that, I, you know? I, <laughs> no, I think you could have achieved the same effect by, because there are shots that are about from where like, the spots are being mounted, right? Yeah. Where you're, it's as if you're in the back row, right? And, and you know, you're up in the balcony, back row, looking way down and you're getting to see that stuff. So there's a little bit, you know, and, and am I nitpicking? Absolutely, but you know what? If there's a show I'm gonna nitpick, it's the one that won a bazillion Tonys and everyone's going bananas over. So yes, I'm gonna nitpick. Like, don't awesome. use shots that the- there's a camera no. in the back of the stage when King George comes out. Right, there's a camera in the back of the stage. And there's the stage lights on him. And there's some cameras that I think are, are moving around, right? Like there's some handheld cameras. And there's a, and a little bit of me is like, you know, you could, you could shoot this somewhat the way that like Jonathan Demi does for uh, Stop Making Sense where it's all like, like very little that's on stage, right? Um, you could shoot it you all from shot different, from the stage, right? Like very right. Most of it's shot like from where the audience would from be. The audience that's what perspective, I'm, right? So, but that being said, like this is terrific, and I probably you know my initial number I gave you is probably a little low, so I'll probably switch it on the fly. The one thing that I do want to point out is again, having watched it, just again, it's crazy how this is a little dated already. And what I mean by dated is that when this was being developed in the early part of the last decade, right? Figure 2000, you know, he's, he's writing it in 2010, 11, they're staging it, they're developing it. And it doesn't really hit till the middle part of the decade. The thing on everybody's mind is immigration. And, the, and, the, and a big part of this show, you know, and one of the lines in the show is like, immigrants, we get stuff done. Like, this is we a real- We get the job done. Right, we get the job done. And one of the knocks is that he's an immigrant, right? That Hamilton's an immigrant. This is, and the casting, and it's all very much about immigration. And, and within, and it's not that this is the movie's fault. I'm not, it's not gonna lose points. I'm just commenting, like, considering the last few months of what we're paying attention to as far as the injustice of the haves and the have-nots and police brutality, this one's a little like, oh yeah, we were worried about that too. It's like, I well, mean, you can argue also it's, that they, uh, they they skim over the fact that these were all slave owners. I mean, there's like a, a brief mention of well, Jefferson it comes up a not, few times, yeah, yeah, Jefferson not you know tending to his own land. There's a few things, but like, yeah, that's some that's something else that well and is relevant so, now. But it's still thrilling that you have black and brown actors playing the founding fathers. Sure, that's absolutely, that, and, and and the spirit behind it couldn't be more relevant in terms of what is happening on the streets of America right now. No, absolutely. But but it does occur to me, like, because some people, you know, I, I and I will, I'm, I'm doing the, some people have said without any evidence, but I know that I've read this, that there is a school of thought that maybe the actual deal that in the room where it happens wasn't about where the capital was. It was about, we're not going to fight slavery so that we can get the bank started. Well, that's you know, right. tragic. And I mean, that, but then that, but that's but like that's, an ongoing thing in the in the forming of this country. Like in seventeen seventy, no, absolutely, there's a I, whole number right. about you know the triangle point, trade and stuff. Right, you know? but my point is that that's a that's a much bigger give than oh, we'll let the right. That's a much bigger give, and that's a much sure. darker legacy. That to Christie's point of glossing over slavery, right. like. That's that's a big one, right? Yeah, as, so, as, as Dave pointed out during one of the King George, because if we'd stayed under Britain, we'd have gotten rid of slavery earlier, and we'd have the NHS. 
Right. Um, I mean, now that you know, I would I would argue that immigration is still one of the issues I'm, we're trying to. I'm pay not saying it's not. To. Absolutely, you know, like it's the, just the Dreamers just right. got their their Supreme Court victory, which hopefully Agreed. will do some good. You've got the camps are still there, and and you know the right. the coronavirus numbers are spiking. So I'm like, I I don't know if that's gone away, uh, but I hear you. Like at the right. time of the plates we were spinning, it was a, it was, it was. Yeah. And I, and again, I'm not knocking it. It's just like, it's amazing that a, that the Broadway hit from four years ago is already gated. But I, to like, Christie's point, but to Christie's bit, point though, right. the, the idea that we are, it, that people are feeling rather revolutionary right now, that we do have so many demonstrations that are happening. There's so much pushback against kind of, you know, bodies of power in this country. I think it's as timely as ever. Um, and it's an interesting little time capsule because it is, you know, in the run-up to the 2016 presidential election. Yeah, Mike Pence would be walking out of this show just a few months later. Right. Well, they they, they spoke to him. Right. That's one. The, the cast read a letter to him when they knew he was in the audience after he and Trump had been elected, and he was all miffed and pissy walking away from it. But you know, part amazing. of why. Part of why Hamilton became the phenomenon that it became before it even made it to Broadway was because the Obamas gave it their seal of approval. Right. Had a, a performance of Hamilton, of some songs from Hamilton at the White House, and Michelle Obama said it was the most profound piece of art she'd ever experienced. And so I think that's, they have that stamp, that clout of that time of hope, that time of like, multicultural possibility and working together and, and asking the questions yeah yeah and, and that's and that was gone soon <laughs> afterward like four months later <laughs> when the election happened and so it's sort of a, a bittersweet little time capsule too what's also interesting is like there is a history of big broadway shows having these sort of relatively bare bones like let's shoot the show ideally with the original cast versions which doesn't preclude that later we won't get like the big movie version you know so like you can there's a Les Mis there's a Cats there's a an End of the Woods and a Sweeney Todd like a lot of these sort of you know smaller scale just let's shoot the show movies uh but then later they do like the film version and so down the road at some point with whatever like the next generation of exciting you know black and brown theater performers that we get there's still a hamilton movie to be made and i i'm very excited about what those prospects might be we've not said the name renee elise goldsberry yet oh. Let's please do that because she's a goddess and she steals this whole thing. The song that we played at the beginning of our show today is Satisfy, which I think is the best song in the whole so thing. So good. It's so profound. I mean, all the music is so dense and so complicated. Like, I'm so impressed by the, how daring this is lyrically, musically, tonally in terms of its beats. But, like, the, the whole rewind thing, the whole Satisfy right. section is, is yeah. so thrilling. Um, she's no, the, amazing. And she was so right, great the, in Waves, too. She's right, the mom the references, of Waves. The references oh, really? to other, like, to current and older hip-hop is so good, right? Like, the, the there's a line that, that, you know, paraphrases the message. Yep. Um, you know, there's, you know, some of uh, Lafayette's raps are real close to Eminem style. Um, and then there's also references is, to South Pacific, though. Yeah, but then you know, but then like here comes the King, and the King song is like that could be a Elton John song practically, right? Like the the rhythm and and the and the orchestration and and the style of that song is so wonderfully different than the rest of the show, be, and it's, which. It's, it's very brill. Right? It's very brill building, actually. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, it's so uh, good. In mm -hmm. fact, I'd say I would equate it with there's a there's a song that that uh, Carol King and Jerry Goffin wrote that uh, was left off of compilation records for a long time because it's called "He Hit Me and It Felt Like a Kiss," oh, uh, yeah. and that's no. very similar. Like I will send armies to destroy you to show you how much I love. You. Right. It makes <laughs> me think of Herod's song in uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Right, Which well, that's, that's like a vaudeville number. No, you know? Right, but I mean, like, it, that, that 
that music, that that song is so separate from the rest of it, right? right? Um, intentionally well, so. A, right? Yeah, it's like the, the white people in this show are either <laughs> the actual king or royalists, you know, and 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 so the fact that the yeah. the, um, the American idiom of hip hop is different than the more sort of traditional songwriting or traditional Broadway that those guys represent is super intentional. Obviously. Right, his song's a little square. Yeah, by, by comparison to like the rap battle. Yes. <laughs> about what to do about France. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, but that song has been stuck in my head, man. That has been, and also, um, Dear Theodosia has been stuck in my head because, mm. do you guys ever see the Dear Baby Yoda parody? No. <laughs> there were a couple of guys at the ringer who did, Dear Baby Yoda, what do you say to you? It's really cute. <laughs> it's, it's, it, I'll, I'll, we'll find it, but it's, that's what right. I knew about this from that, I mean, sadly, but, um, I, yeah, I loved it and I, I'm happy that it's out. I'm happy that it exists in the world, especially now. Um, I'm glad they didn't wait until, you know, a year yeah. and a half from now. to. Show. I can't wait to see high school productions of this. Because uh, <laughs> one day there will be. It must, they must already exist, right? So you uh, it's probably prohibitively expensive to license right now. But I'm sure uh, as the years go by and it becomes older. Right, because you got to you know, license that stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. But um, also, like, you have to cut Hamilton it way down. Hamilton Jr. <laughs> well, right. Like, you'd have to cut it way down. Like, you can't, I mean, can you imagine, like, hey, parents, we're doing a two and a half hour show. Uh, look, high schools do rent and stuff. I mean, like, yeah, I think, true. but 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 there is, you know, like, there's a version that they call, like, whatever junior, and it's usually for, like, like middle schoolers to do. And, like, I, I, I attended an Into the Woods junior that my uh, friend's daughter was in, and it's basically act one, and children will listen. Oh. So what you're saying is that Hamilton Jr. wouldn't have the whole Reynolds papers. Probably section. not have the Reynolds pamphlet, yeah. Uh, one of the things I want to point out, because I watched this with the family here, and my wife was talking about how impressed she was that everybody could rap and, and sing while dancing, and everybody sounds so good. Mm -hmm. um, and I had recently read, and I talked to her about this, I had recently read some, you know, and people who regularly do musical theater are like, yeah, that's the job. <laughs> um, that kind of breath had, control. Right. I had read something <laughs> where the cast was talking about what was different about Hamilton was the stairs and all of those stairs mm. up and down that everybody's going up and down all the time. Like that was the thing that was a pain in the ass. Oh, I bet. And well, like, that was the one where it's like, do we have to do the stairs? The, the women you can tell are wearing these sort of like plates that look like corsets, but obviously aren't corsets because they have to sing and dance and no one can do anything in those fucking things. Mm -hmm. uh, so like that was, that was a cool bit of cheat, you know? But yeah, you're right, those stairs, that's a lot of, that's a lot. <laughs> It's impressive. It seems like it's just really, really hard. It requires just an incredibly high level of every kind of skill, musically, artistically, physically, emotionally. Yeah, and one of the cool things beyond the fact that you can see Jonathan Groff spitting on the stage is like <laughs> the emotion in like when Philip Sue does her song about the, the letters that she's burning. You can mm. really see so like good. the subtlety of the emotion in that. And yeah. that's why I, I love being able to see this in film form like this. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm high. I'm saying 9.8. I said nine and a half. I, this is extraordinary. I'm really thrilled that I got to see it. Matt, are you uh, changing your number? I, I'm going up to an eight and a half. All right. So we're a 9.3. Okay, 9.3. Um, it's at 100%. Yeah, I mean, I read the book. I like the book better because he lives at the end. Um, <laughs> next week. Wait, we you read the Federalist Papers? <laughs> <laughs> next week we're going to. No, but I read. I read the biography. Sorry, I read oh, the Hamilton okay. biography. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, no, next week we'll talk about the documentary "Mucho Mucho Amor" about uh, the famed Spanish-speaking astrologist Walter Mercado, and yes. Lin Manuel Miranda is in that as well. So. Oh, nice! <laughs> he has a very cute little starstruck moment with his fellow uh, fellow Puerto Rican nice. uh, Walter Mercado. <laughs> All right, so numbers are nine point three. Yeah, go. This is this is the thing that's worth getting Disney Plus for. If you yeah. didn't get it for the Mandalorian, get it now for this. And they're also running almost all of Schoolhouse Rock, so there's that as well. Mm -hmm. what, what did uh, I, uh, did I guess y'all watch the screener? My audio was terrible, and so I waited and watched it this morning. At the end of it, it tried to kick me into the sound of music. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, no. I got that show. <laughs> that's. I got that show. Mm, no. Anyway. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, follow us at BeFast all day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and do check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast all day. We are uh, currently recapping Love, Victor on Hulu, and uh, we just put out a survey for people to pick a Joel Schumacher film, one of five that we will be reviewing later this month, but you guys get to pick which one if you're a Patreon supporter. So thank you for that. Uh, take care, everybody, and uh, until next time, we are not giving away our shot. Bye.